Welcome to the Blacked Out Podcast. I am Anthony. Primo is uh, being a douche, so I got him on the floor. And we got John Warren, the uh, the wizard, the owner of Iron Body. I've been lifting with him in our YouTubes. Thank you for joining, brother. Of course. Thank you. This is going to be a really epic podcast, guys, because I learned a lot from John. People ask me, you know, where did you get your knowledge from with gear? And I, at first, I looked into Dylan Gemelli's videos because he would talk about the compound thoroughly on YouTube. I have to skip the first couple minutes because it's all cautionary bullshit. And then uh, the second was trial and error and trial and success through my own, you know, doings of what I was doing with gear. But I would go to John's because we were essentially neighbors. We lived in the same apartment village. Uh, we became friends. Uh, I just kind of met him at Equinox one day and we found out we, we met. Both. We met at a show. I Remember? thought we met at Equinox before the show. No, no, I have seen you. We've seen you, but we never, I never actually talked to you until got we it. the show. I was that like, makes sense, actually. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And I started picking his brain. About how he does things, you know. You know, is this harassment? Well, well, why did you? Because I was shredded as fuck at that show. Right? Yeah, you're like, oh, what we're, the gonna, fuck we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> like, yeah, like, and we're gonna show. Uh, if you guys don't watch the YouTube clips, we're gonna sh- like John's, John's fucking metabolism, John's work ethic, John's knowledge is just like where you want it to be. I believe you're two years older than me. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. So okay, so he's like an older brother. Um, and we've, you know, if we lose touch for like a little bit of time, we can always pick, uh, pick right up where we left off type of thing. So John and I have been hanging out a lot recently. Uh, the gym finally opened. It's absolutely gorgeous here in, uh, Newport beach, fashion Island, right outside fashion Island. And, uh, kind of wanted to just like, we first, when we started talking about gear, I was like, damn, this is a big world. This is intimidating. Uh, and I would kind of use him as an outlet and now I'm doing my own thing. And before I got onto the halo train, uh, I kind of was figuring out, you know, maybe 10 milligrams is perfect. John was like, that is perfect. He's like, you don't need to take a full 20. If you do it this way, your liver should be fine. I just posted my liver results on my Instagram story. Uh, everything came back very, uh, clean, uh, and on point. I'm doing the halo at 10 milligrams, two to three times a week. And today I did it for the first time at five MGs and I got a really good response. And I was telling John, I don't know if it's my, it is my favorite compound, but I don't know if it's if it's so much the halo, if it is the trend and the halo together, where it's like this, the blood is just so good on the pump. I mean, that's the ultimate, like, that's the God combo, right? That's where you feel like you're walking. It really, God. it really is, dude. It feels fucking amazing. But you're a DECA, you like DECA and trend together, right? Um, I, I mean, I've done it. I, I do it typically like the beginning of a, of like a comp prep, but it's like low. I mean, we're looking at the total doses of Nandrolone, right? So it's mm-hmm. like... I might do trend like a 150. And DECA where? DECA maybe like 250 to 350 tops. You know? And then do you fuck with Caber? Because I, I personally yeah. never popped it. I think I popped I, it one time and I didn't need it. I was like, fuck it. I do just because I've heard it can increase your loads. Never heard that. Yeah, it's a porn star. <laughs> so, it's a porn star. So I heard build. that. So yeah. I was like, hey, if it's supposed to help and then it'll do that too, I might as well give it a shot. But right. I mean, yeah, I've never had anything off on my bloods as far as like progesterone and and stuff like that. Got it. You say Primo at a higher dose can fuck with your dick personally because everybody's a little bit different. And then does DECA do the same thing? Because I I do run into that. I haven't, but I just haven't run DECA over. I've run DECA like 400 by itself before, Mm -hmm. like with with tests. But I was running tests probably like at 600. Never didn't have any issues. And I usually don't do DECA over 250. So I don't don't really get DECA dick or anything. Got it. In fact, my dick was nuts with a DECA and Trin. I was doing like, at one point I was doing like 200 DECA and maybe like 200, 250 Trin. And that was like, my dick was nuts. I can, <laughs> I can fuck a wall on Trin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, even at 150, it's fucking nuts. And just honestly speaking with the Halo and the Trin, yeah. Like I just, I walk around just fucking like cocky. You know what I mean? But I keep it to myself. I'm like, well, you gotta be yeah. careful in like road rage. Instance. I don't <laughs> so. have that anymore. Like, I think I put myself in check a while ago. But when I'm in the gym, it's like, fuck, man, I am the shit. Like, well, this is like insane. The one thing I notice on like if trend goes like above 150 for me is like my fight or flight response just gets like fucked and like, like, like I get I get so like intense that like a fight or flight is situation where there's like no way. like someone like taking a parking spot. I'm like, this motherfucker's fuck trying to kill yeah. me. Like I can just feel my body and I'm trying to like tell myself, okay, just be conscious that That's this this isn't hilarious. you. But yeah. Okay, so what's your favorite compound? Um, you know, if it, if trend was like <laughs> all the good stuff, then that mm. would obviously be the favorite. But I it just there's too many negatives with it, you know. Like, I just I start to not sleep. If I go if I go anything above like 250, my stomach is just starting to get fucked up over the last couple of years. Really? Like instantly. I don't run any, I have no problems with trend. Yeah. You know, I used to do high trend. When I first met you, I was doing low, low tests, like 125. And then I ramped my trend up from like 200 all the way up to fucking 525 right before the show. Oh, like so the week. test was like a baseline. Yeah. Just so I, I actually felt fantastic on that. And maybe that's what I need to do is lower my, my tests a little bit again. 
and try try that again because what trend it trend at six well maybe just lower my tests in general if i'm taking trend you know because i've been trying to stay a little lower on trend a little higher on tests doing yeah. it the more traditional way but you stay you stay dry all the time i've kind of realized yeah. for me and for a lot of people trends not a dry compound nor is it a wet compound somewhere yeah. in between deca i would definitely say is a wet compound overall uh can you can you cut on anadrol because a lot of people they, they swear by anadrol yeah yeah I, I cut on anadrol i mean i use it during contest prep and stuff what, at what point are you using it like how many weeks out? Um, when are you using Halo like a week or two out, right? I'll I'll kind of like it, it just kind of depends on what I've done leading into that comp prep, right? Am I coming off like a big bulk or like this past time I, I came off after being like off for a while, mm -hmm. so like I kind of needed to like build into it a little bit. So I would have probably done it. I didn't do it this time, but if I did, I would have done it like a little earlier mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, kind of comp prep. But typically, I'll do it. You know, about six weeks out, and I'll take that, and then I'll just switch that to okay. Halo, like the last two, because it gives you that fullness. You know, when you're flat, you know the the draw. Yeah, yeah, the a draw. Yeah, and where yeah. do you take your carbs? Because I know you kind of like the way you do your prep with your your macros is a lot different than a lot of people. Um, you know, I've played around a lot of stuff. You know, I, I used to be pretty low carb at certain times. Um, I still incorporate some fasting and stuff, but I'm I'm pretty high carb right now. You know, at this point, what is I, high carb? Just, <laughs> I mean, I'm probably not doing any lower than 350. Okay. Yeah, you know? I can't, I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, and it's just, you know, my body, at this point, I wouldn't have been able to do that before, but now I can just feel like ramping up my metabolism. So it's like when I'm dieting, I just, I don't really cut carbs, I just cut fats pretty mm. much. You know, cut out burgers and pizzas. Like That's like the first eight weeks of my diet. <laughs> yeah, I know, I feel that. And you usually cut out, uh, I think you said you cut out milk at a certain point, like dairy and all that shit. Yeah, I try not to do any dairy. You know. What about stevia? Do you even give a fuck about that? I think that's like drastically extreme. I don't think, I don't think stevia makes a difference. I do think it maybe... Like, if you're not going to win your show because you had stevia in your coffee like... Well, I know some prior. prep coaches like Jansen, they want, they want their guys to cut out like aspartame and stuff. And maybe there's, there's something to that, but... I don't do that. I do try to limit it yeah. in, in what I take. So I, I, it's going to be in pre-workouts and stuff like that. You can't help it. But I try to avoid it like in like my protein supplements and got stuff it. like that. But, so. What are your thoughts? Here we go. So uh, John's got another kid on the way. He's got a kid. Uh, he's been dabbling in the dark arts for a while. He runs his shit, you know, not high, not, a, not a super aggressive, somewhere in between because he's doing open uh, shows and stuff. And he's got another kid on the way. So what are your thoughts on fertility? Because I tell my clients, if you can keep up with HCG without tests, blah, 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 my method. But I also say, you know, I think a lot of it's genetic. Well, I mean, look at Ronnie, right? How many yeah. kids does Ronnie have? Jeremy Bundia popped one out. Yeah. And then Chris Bumstead's pretty hopeful on the Nelks, uh, Nelk Boys podcast that he's going to have kids. Yeah, and I didn't, I mean, I didn't do anything. I didn't try. I mean, actually, I was actively trying not to have a kid the first one. <laughs> like, and I just thought I had so. So my first kid was conceived probably few days after I had just competed. So I was Damn. fucking trend out. And I just won the light heavyweight class in the, the J color desert classic. And it was we, a celebration baby. Yeah. Well, we went to Cabo after. And so my, no my, my ex-wife at the time, Cabo was, baby, baby. she had competed yeah. as well. So she was, you know, she was on Anavar and stuff and she had, hadn't had her period. So it's like, I kind of, she hadn't had her period for like two months or so. So I kind of just thought we were good to go. Damn. And I guess somehow that, everything just synced up just right. Like, Damn. Her, like she got her cycle back and, and she ended up getting pregnant. Like, after yeah, that. a lot of people are paranoid about that. Me personally, I just think like whatever happens, happens. Obviously, I'm going to use uh, the best of my knowledge and abilities to stay fertile. But uh, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. If I have to adopt, I'll have to adopt. But well, I can say I don't, I don't know if this has an impact. Because like I said, there's people who've been blasting their whole lives. And that, they still have, have kids. kids. Yeah. But um, I mean, when I started cycling, I started at 23. And I did two cycles a year in PCT until I was 30. So it's like I wasn't like going hard. I started to start no. TRT until I was 30. And I can see my kid at 31, my first right. kid. And now, now I have another kid on the way. And I'm almost 36. So right. I've been on TRT for the last five years. So, I mean, I didn't do anything. I didn't take, you know, h and I I've done ACG here and there, but not for like fertility, just to get my balls looking good, you know? Not, no HMG either? None of that, no. Okay, damn, interesting. And it was a pretty quick process. We decided we were going to try, and it was right away and then she had a miscarriage and then again a couple months later oh, it hit again Christ. yeah i can't imagine to be i honestly just can't imagine having kids sometimes i facetime clients and like 27 years old two kids married yeah, that's crazy. I'm like, that's yeah my mom had me at 19 can you imagine fucking having like a what do you have like a 12 13 year old fucking running around yeah i know <laughs> dude. Be, dude. i mean i nuts. have like primos driving me nuts right now he's just like <laughs> really just turned one so it's just fucking gnarly speaking of primo we're gonna take a quick break i'm gonna grab this guy because he's just frantically walking around everywhere we're gonna get right back
All right, well, I'm happy we took a break because I walked into my room and Primo uh, took a shit on my carpet. So now we're back. Uh, little man just turned one yesterday and he's been feisty as fuck. Maybe he's just pissing and celebrating his birthday, but just uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so hopefully he's going to chill. Uh, so John's a really big, he, he, he trains for the big bucks in Newport Beach and he focuses on mobility. Uh, and, and before I give you the floor on this, mobility is so huge, guys, because yeah, you need to lift with great form. Uh, that's, that's key. But also if you're not, if you can't get from point A to point B to point C in terms of your range of motion, you're limiting blood flow to certain, uh, to, to, I should just say to the hundred percent of your muscle group right there. So you're not going to grow as efficiently per rep per set. And you're going to be doing this for years on end. So you want to keep adding more and more layers to your body. And I'll let you take the floor, right? Because I noticed sometimes John, he, he really warms up, man. You, you take like 30 <laughs> minutes. Know, you know, you're, you're like, come on, let's I'm go. Like, Can we go, dude. Like, I, I'm telling you, there's reasons why. And like, people will watch me. I'll, I mean, and I'll be doing some shit. Like, I'll have a fucking balloon and I'll be like blowing up. Oh, a balloon yeah. You, you do like lung work, right? <laughs> well, I do deadlift. Yeah. I'm just like, fucking A. Dude. Yeah, I know. And it's like, it's like so in depth, but it's so, so really important, you know, at the end of the day to like have a system that's where it's supposed to be. And what I mean by that is like, Everybody kind of falls into a, like a little bit of a, a common pattern, you know, especially bodybuilders. We tend to just get in this extension Tight. pattern where we're, our back kind of helps with everything. Yeah. Right. And so a, a lot of yes. times we, we start to like lift through that and, uh, you know, every, we turn every exercise into a back extension movement instead of really focusing on the exact muscle, getting that to move it from point A to point B. So a lot of what I do before I work out is I make sure that like I'm in alignment in the sense of like my hips are where they're supposed to be. I don't have like sacral rotation. To do that, I kind of there's a couple little tests I'll do to mm. see, um, and then that'll let me know am I good to go? Because sometimes I'm in really good alignment and I, I can just pretty much do a couple prep movements and I'll I'll be really good to go. But sometimes I'm not quite there and I've got to do a few things to get me neutral. And, and there's really specific inhibition exercises that do that. When have you got? When did you get really into this? Because I don't remember it was always like this. Um. Well, I've always been really into like making sure that I have enough mobility to do what I need to do because I always feel like before I knew much about mobility. So, I mean, I, so I'm credentialed as like a mobility specialist yeah. through uh, FRC, ISM, and yeah. then I'm also uh, PRI credentialed. I've done other primary courses. So PRI is Postural Restoration Institute. And so I did that Jesus. over the last couple of years. And again, it's stuff that we apply to like the general pot, but it also applies to like bodybuilders. If you look at bodybuilders, think about how often you see a guy whose like legs are all fucked up looking. Like one of them is way bigger. Like, yeah. like the left side vastus lateralis will be way more big. And then the, the right adductor will be way big. They'll have a, a right lat that's way bigger. Uh, a tricep that's underdeveloped. And, and that's, that's all common. That's, that's a common movement pattern that you can fix. You don't have to look so asymmetrical. You don't have to have abs that are totally asymmetrical. If your hips are aligned, your abs will be symmetrical. So I think a lot of bodybuilders will benefit from obviously getting aligned because they're not going to like hurt themselves. You know, you, you have a lot more range of motion. You're not yeah. gonna be pushing through like bony blockages and also you're going to develop yourself better. So I, when I'm warming up, I'm always kind of trying to get myself in the best alignment possible. And then my second goal is to prep my body to work harder. So I'm doing things to increase PAP post activation potentiation. Jesus. Right. So that, so basically you do a certain, certain things to get this your nervous system. This is where I just sit and listen. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> you do a few things to get your nervous system ready before you work out. So that way when you start, like you don't have to warm up as much. Your body's ready to work really hard. So there's different things. You do like ballistic isometrics, you, <laughs> like all capsular what warm up. What the fuck? That's so, so nice. I mean, I post all this like on my IG and stuff and I try to like explain it a little bit, but really when I like have bodybuilders and stuff that I program for, I just, I give them little pieces of it. You know, it's kind of nice. overwhelming. Usually I just give some guys some easy stuff to do for the shoulders because Every bodybuilder's got fucked up shoulders, and they shouldn't. You know, it just takes. Yeah, I know. I, I think I'm. They're not fucked up, but I can definitely be tight. Because yeah, I remember yeah. when I was doing MMA, uh, they were like, "Damn, bro, like you need to like relax." Yeah, I mean, you're, as you go in there in a bodybuilder, like you're, we're in this extension in MMA, and they're all fluid and they're bending in every direction. So. Yeah, and it doesn't complement bodybuilding. No, not a, not not at all. But be caught in an arm bar from fucking 170 pound black belt that I would. I would own the first round because I like 205, and but then he would just wait to tucker oh, me out. They love that shit too. Yeah, he would yeah. wait to tucker me out, and then you would catch me in an arm bar, and then I'd go to the gym, and I'm like, fuck my life, dude. Yeah. Like, exactly. fuck this guy. At the end of the day, I just think bodybuilders in general don't do enough mobility work. It's like we're so dedicated to diet, to definitely cardio, not. To, yeah. to the resistance training. And it's like, literally, it takes 10 minutes a day if you just really put some capsular work in, do some in range stretching with some isometrics. It's not, it's not really hard. 
It's just like a little extra, and it's gonna make you better. You can cut out your warm ups. Well, you, know? you being the pinnacle of like doing the prep that's needed, I would say I'm I'm like in the middle because what I like to do is I'll foam roll, uh, and then I'll do active stretching in between my workouts. I'm yeah. really big on that. Yeah, it's like really good. It. Like what I'll do, I'll do this thing. So between my workouts, you're doing active stretching. I might get in the position where I'm doing an in range isometric joint like uh, contraction where I'm like explain in, that in, one just for people to. Focus. I might be like, I might be like in a position where I'm in an extreme internal rotation, maybe kneeling. Okay, and I'm, I'm just generating some force in that position jesus where, yeah and i'm just getting those capsules to kind of work at an extreme range and they become more effective in the mid ranges right that makes i remember sense. the for the first time i worked out with you at uh what was it at lifetime look at it Nigel. you had a lacrosse ball yeah you were, you were like, swearing by like the density of that thing and how it works and i can pinpoint and foam roll with that uh <laughs> so i've i try to i can't i still haven't bought one but i try to what i like to do when i foam roll a lot of people don't really realize is you need a flat surface right yeah a lot of people like to foam roll on like the foam <laughs> You know, it's like soft, and then I like to just make sure it's uncomfortable to stay there as for as long as I can. But that lacrosse ball, man, that thing was really like opening up. Yeah, it gets. I mean, I really have my clients use that like between their shoulder blades mm. and things like the Terry's Minor, and it's just to get your tissues more receptive. Like at the end of the day, the only thing that's going to make you more mobile is actually putting force on your tissues. It's not going to be stretching or rolling. Like those are things that make your tissues more ready to accept it. Mm. But you're going to have to kind of get in your in range and keep tension there, and, and actually get the right stuff to, to fire. Uh, you think Bradley Martin does any of this mobility stuff? John <laughs> fired him once upon a time. Well, you know what? To be honest, Brad was a good trainer. Okay. Actually, he, was yeah. a, he was a decent trainer. He was pretty good. Okay. Um, especially at the time, you know. So, I mean, I've been in the industry for a while now. I worked with um, quite a few actually kind of big guys in the industry, but I knew Brad real well. We worked together at uh, Gold Gym Fullerton. I started there in 2010, and I think he mm. came on right at the, a couple months after me. So, we were kind of the first kind of guys there and uh, we were trainers together and we were pretty competitive like we would switch switch out kind of trainer of the month a lot oh, wow. so we were cool i really liked brad he was a cool guy um you know and then i started um my path kind of in the more like management side and i became like the fitness manager started running the, the training department and so he became kind of like my employee instead of you know just like a buddy nice <laughs> and yeah. so you know he was he was a good guy i didn't have any issues with him but in general there was like a few things that just weren't sitting well with like other trainers like he was always cool with me but he was kind of a, kind of a dick to other people like i had a, I had a little buddy he was a real small guy like maybe five five 150 pounds and, Brad. and brad's fucking giant right yeah, yeah. and i remember this guy went to visit his mom and she made he's, he's like um he, they're mediterranean she made him some special sandwich using you know food from the homeland or whatever and then he's, the he, and he, he, he came into me and he's like dude Brad just ate my sandwich. He just went in the fridge and just ate my sandwich. That's hilarious. He's like, my mom made that for me. And I'm nice. like, and I go up to him. I was like, Brad, dude, why, why'd you do that? He's like, it's fucking hungry, man. I'm going catabolic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, man? That's pretty fucking funny. And, you know, there was, he was starting to become kind of insta famous at the time and being a little flaky with a couple clients. And he just wasn't like a real positive influence on the trainers. And so you I'm had, not, you had to let him go. I'm not trying to be a dick, too, but. We had tons of complaints about body odor, <laughs> yeah, and he would shit. joke about it too. And he, he knows he would That's joke about it all the time. So yeah, I ended up having to let him go, and he, he got really upset about it. In fact, I came in the next day and I read like a night report from the front desk girl that he had tried to come in late at night because he lived like right across the street from the gym. And he tried to come in and they wouldn't let him in, and he, he tried to like talk his way in, and then they still wouldn't let him. He started like trying to shake through the. the, the he's <laughs> like, I just want to get a pump. Yeah, and so I'm reading the uh, the report. And she's like, Brad was very scary. He was screaming, I just want to lift. I just want to pump. No way. And that's when he had, like, he had literally just started his first cycle kind of around then. When I knew him, he was 215 pounds. And he went up to, like, 255. After I he think started. he cruises. Uh, not just Brad, but anybody like Brad with that type of size. I think they cruise year-round at 300. Well, now, I mean, now. I mean, he definitely pressed then. I mean, he was pushing hard. Yeah, but what do you think a cruise to maintain that structure, that physique? I don't think it's that hard, man. I mean, I think No, no, can, once you have it, I'm just yeah, saying I think it, you can, you think I think you can hold that, like, slightly... I think 200. MG. 200. Yeah, I okay. mean, I think that's plenty. I'm thinking three just because of the addiction of how good it feels and wanting to still make some gains and all that I'll shit. I'll tell you this. Like, Brad was really smart about his shit when he did it. He he waited till he was 21. He wanted to, like, not make sure. And he was real careful. He, he had a lot of bad reactions, too, to, like, trend. He told me he had an anxiety attack. He told me he wanted to go to the hospital. Like, like Damn, I've, I, he must have ran that shit high. I don't know. I mean, some people are just sensitive, you know. Yeah. I don't, he, he said he didn't, and I believe him. He he, he was tight with Brandon Gerties, you know him? In the no. industry. He used to train Breon Ansley and stuff. Like, they're, they were smart guys. Like, he had a good people around him. I just don't like uh, when people talk shit on trend. And then when I ask them, like, well, where did you run it at? It's like well over 500 milligrams. Yeah, and I'm I mean, like, well, that's a different side of the vial. That's a different compound at that point. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like training I mean, 150, 200 is my best friend. And it changes too. You might feel good at one dose one time and then that dose, just your body can't handle it again. You know? Yeah, I guess. I've just, I've never had a bad issue with it besides the one time this, I already I gave this story on the podcast when this lady took over my, this dog is driving me <laughs> fucking nuts today. He's being a little brat. This lady took my parking spot and then I shouted at them and all this shit. And then I kind of had to realize to control my temperament. That's what I was saying. Yeah. And I had to put myself in check the first time I did Halo the Cycle with Trend because I felt like a fucking god. And my roommate was being really nice to me, offering me, you know, do I want something from Target? And I just wanted to tell him to fuck off. <laughs> you know like, what I mean? He wants to, fuck you. It's, the, it's a cocky stack. Like a lot of people say Trend will make you an asshole. I feel like if you don't have good control of your temperament and your ego, it'll be Halo. Or maybe Halo and Trend. Yeah, when people talk about like roid rage, it's not tests and stuff. It's, it's really only Halo and Trend are the only things that have ever affected my and mind. And I don't, and do you agree? Like, I don't really, I like to talk about Halo a lot because not a lot of people know too much about it. Obviously, you do. And I'm, I'm experiencing it now and loving this compound. I think five to 10 is perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, 20, what's the point? Yeah, I've done higher getting ready for shows, but like the last couple of years, like I said, 10, I've never gone higher than 10. I've done five too. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And then one thing where we differ is like, we talked about Deca and Trent. I know he runs it light. I differ on that. He differs on my T3 use because he thinks, and I, you know, 75, I believe, is pretty lightly aggressive. Micrograms to live there. John, you took it to 12? I was doing 12 and a half, three times a so week what is, for like four weeks. Un, yeah, but okay, can you, can you be honest though? You're like naturally like lean. No, I I, I am. I mean, yeah, I'll, he's I'll like flat, naturally I'll lean. out like yeah. too much, but I I mean, in general, I think people. Like you don't even need a fat burner. Let's be Yeah, honest. I'm not taking anything right now. Yeah, you I'll don't probably, need one. It's crazy. But yeah, I mean, I definitely think some bodybuilders run. I mean, I think 75 is kind of high for sure. Yeah, he thinks it's he thinks it's fairly high. I, I think uh, I, don't, I just don't think it's like a bodybuilding drug. You know what I mean? Do you believe it's catabolic? Because yeah. I don't notice that. Well, you're just, you're so round and stuff. But yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you're also not. I mean, I don't know. Like as you get leaner, you might see like if it starts to. A I'm okay bit. with sacrificing a little mu muscle when I'm trying to get shredded though, because I know it's going to come back I right don't like when the I way carb I feel up. Feel on it too. I can, I can feel like my heart rate elevated. I can oh, feel really? Like, yeah. That's what people say about Clint. Yeah, well, Clint for sure. Yeah, but um, do you fuck with Clint? Uh, I haven't this prep yet. I probably will, but like I said, I told you that I don't go over forty on that either. That's crazy. That's insane. And, and I, I, I kind of so like I like to do two days on, two days off, old school stuff. You like to do I, the I, I don't that. always like. Yeah. Sometimes I'll run it straight, but yeah. a lot of times I like to, to do. Yeah, that. no, got you. Like I feel the biggest issue with Clint, in my opinion, is people don't feel it, and then they want to double the dose because they want to feel it, and then you stress out the ventricles in your heart because you. Yeah, that's, and I that's mean, where it gets the, the most bad dangerous shit in connotation. Is, is the stimulants. Yeah, you know? but the amounts of fat burners that he uses, the amount of the dosage is that's like micro. Microscopically low. I mean, I'll use yohimabine and stuff like that. I've done that and before. Helos or whatever you call it, you inject it in yourself. That, fucking didn't like it. Yeah. The I heard that was a bad one. It, it just made me watery. I would yeah. inject in my stomach. It's a spot treatment of. <laughs> it's a spot treatment of like clen basically that you can inject like HGH, but it's a it's a it, the solution stings. And if you inject, and do you agree with this one too? If I inject HGH in my stomach too much. I can get water retention yeah. just from the needle doing that. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I'll switch it to a muscle. I'll go IM, and usually it goes away after a day or two. Or yeah, I like IM anyway. And I do L-carnitine sometimes for prep. What do you think of that? I haven't done L-carnitine. I mean, I like it. I think it helps, but sometimes even though it's like you use like slim pins, it's just like I don't want to fucking inject so many goddamn things every day because you got to do it daily. And it's, What are your thoughts on peptides? I am not super, super experienced with peptides. Right. You know, I'm, I'm old but school. But what do you, but me too. So do you think that there could be a little bit of an issue, not like SARMs, but we found out that SARMs are not as good as they, the people. Yeah, I, I mean, I think there's some peptides. I mean, I have clients that are prescribed certain peptides right. from hormone therapy and stuff. Right. I think, like, what is it, CJC and, and stuff. I'm of looking those. into doing, and I think I'm going to start next week when I basically had 25 micrograms of T3. Clen will be done on tomorrow. Uh, AOD, and I forgot the numbers, you know, all fucking numbers, but AOD is a derivative of HGH and it's supposed to just speed up the metabolism. Yeah. I got a buddy who's tried, he says, great. And I do the research. I'm like, you know what, bro, if it gives me that immediate result, I'm down to try it. I don't even know what that is, but I'll tell you HGH, um, yeah. HCG side, side note. Like when I was running TRT, like low, like 125, I started doing HCG at like, I think like a thousand a week, yeah. maybe 500 a week. HCG? HCG with it. My test levels shot up like. I, it's I a test booster in my but i'm saying my body i just dropped so much body and i felt Damn. so good that was Damn. like a really good combo it was like a dry spike yeah i felt i felt like really good mood too like just yeah i bet jesus christ yeah but you don't even fuck with hcg for fertility and you're popping out the kids no exactly it's fucking <laughs> crazy the balls. literally yeah <laughs> but aesthetics. but you do agree that i mean i just want to kind of get back to the fertility thing is I, I feel like there's i deal with a lot of clients that are very paranoid about that you should take the precautions you should do the hcg do you like doing hcg without tests 
Yeah, yeah. No, that, I think I think if you're if you're that's something you're worried about, you should do it. I wasn't trying to have kids. <laughs> like I didn't want kids. And it's not on now, my mind either. I, do. I don't want to have a kid either. <laughs> yeah. So, but I but in the back of my head, I'm like longevity. I mean, right? it can happen. I had, uh, <laughs> I know somebody who knocked up a woman at he's 58 and he was Ooh. been on gear for. 25 years straight. You Damn. Know? <laughs> and he Jesus. got her pregnant. So Christ. it can happen. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. There's, there's protocols guys. There's, there's a lot of protocols. Uh, let's talk about iron body, bro. Let's talk about your gym. It's definitely the best. And I'm not just saying this cause he's here. Cause he's my good friend. It really is the best gym I've worked out at. If, if not ever in, in very long recent memory. Uh, Iron Body's ergonomics, the, the, the equipment is second to none. When you pick up the dumbbells, there's the weight inside the dumbbells that you see spinning. So the ergonomics of the, it's like right here. Perfect. Yeah. Right. And then everything is just so crisp and smooth. And right when you walk in, you know it's quality. And it literally, it's outside Fashion Island, and it holds up to that type of um, stigma, or I guess you could say when people think of Newport. Yeah, I mean, we stuff. put, like I said, almost 500K in 30 Yeah, and it took a while to feet. open this motherfucker, too, because he was asking me questions when I was doing commercial real estate before TikTok. I was looking yeah. into spots. And, man, you found a good spot because I kind of stopped doing my thing on commercial. And I was doing this, and you just opened the gym. Yeah, I mean, it was a process. Done Ir- deal. Irvine Company is not easy to get into. <laughs> well, do, you, do you like, uh, is it everything you thought it would be owning a gym? It's, I mean, it's pretty sick. It's hard to complain. Obviously, there's always things that come with ownership and having business partners and stuff like that. Right, but you only have one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> even having someone else in the kitchen yeah. is always. But overall, it's like I could never, you know, I've been in a lot of situations where I could have went out on my own before. Yeah. And I wanted to wait till it was absolutely perfect. And I just got the absolute perfect situation. I was able to create the dream I had. Every nice. single piece of equipment was hand picked out. You know, and it took prime. a couple of years, right? Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've had I had more than probably like three chances to open different spots. And right. It's like I'm too comfortable. I'm not doing it unless it's perfect. And now it's fucking perfect. You know, I yeah, be and it's 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 crazy too because you found the the clientele that will pay the hundreds of dollars per hour on the session, which is worth it because you guys are just if you sit down here and you're just listening to this conversation. I'm just like, okay, like ballistic. What was it? Isolation? <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Here's my money. Take it and, and, and show me the, the ways. But you, if you want to work out at Iron Body, I, I got lucky because I know the guy. Uh, you have to have a trainer and you have to be there for private sessions, correct? Yeah. And I mean, I, you think about it. When I first started training in Lubbock, Texas yeah. in 2008, 2007, yeah. I was charging 35 bucks an hour. <laughs> That's now, how it started. Yeah, and yeah. Now, now it's 180 an hour, <laughs> you know? Minimum. Yeah, so. Jesus Christ, dude. That's fucking insane. I mean, it's pretty cool to, to like, my dream was always to get out to Newport Beach, you know, watching the OC in Texas as a kid. I was like, I want a gym out there, and, you know, you know took 20 years, but it fucking happened. Good. You know? <laughs> Here's the other thing I wanted to ask you. Your thoughts, uh, I'm a minimalist when it comes to supplementation. I mean, if you're lacking serious in vitamin B12 or something, take it, obviously, but, uh, what are your thoughts? Like, do you wake up in the morning? Do you pop your fish oil? Do you take all your creatine? Oh I got a lot of clients. Should I keep taking my creatine? I'm like, I didn't fucking matter. You're on gear now, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I try, man. I had just, I just wrote this in my, like my little journal, online journal thing. I'm trying to like, as a reminder, I'm trying to take my supplements. I take my night supplements. So you are big on, you're big on your supplements. Your vitamins. No, I mean, omega three, even though I eat a lot of fish, I still take it okay. just, you know, just to be safe. Okay. Um, and then magnesium is a big one for, for most lifters, especially if you're on trend. Not that I'm, I'm not on trend right now. Explain, explain that one. It just depletes your minerals, especially magnesium and, um, helps you with your sleep. Which is helps, why it's hard in the kidneys. Yeah. It helps with higher help, amounts though. Yeah. I mean, it helps with your sleep, helps with your muscle contractions. So, um, at my gym, we, we carry, um, Andrew Huberman's, um, products. Okay. And, uh, I take, um, the magnesium theronate and it's it's the the best across the blood brain barrier it has the highest bioavailability and it people notice a, a difference right away with their sleep and so okay. that's huge magnesium is probably the biggest one i have every client on uh, other than that you know i have um some like cycle support trace minerals i take trace minerals yeah every every workout i put that in there just because again your your those levels get really weird whenever you're on gear <laughs> you know yeah you, you can get super mineralized or you can start to lose them a lot depending on what your estrogen's doing what your water's doing yeah so I always take trace minerals i try to take creatine i fucking forget sometimes you oh, know? so you are I, like, I don't give a fuck for that i don't well, remember the last time i took creatine. i tried to i mean getting it's like what is it it's going to give you like a plus point zero zero one still in the right direction and it, it may pull water more into the muscle versus sub q so that's always a good thing so I think the most trash, we're talking about creatine, so I'm, I'm thinking of this, this compound, this is how I explain it. I say it's the, the creatine of the steroid world. I think D-ball is the, the trashiest compound you can take. I mean, some people love it. They say it's I like know. the best mood enhancer. I've, I've never, I don't get super watery, right? So I've never. Oh, that's right. But you, <laughs> you, you took it, right? So I've, yeah, I took it, and I, was, I never had any issues with it. I Didn't mean, a lot of it just go away right when you were done? No, I mean, I that was long, that was probably the first thing first I ever stack. took, you know. <laughs> so Usually that was goes, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've done T ball like once, but I was always Anavar, always taking Anavar, and then I've only done Winster like once, you know. Meant. No, 
I would never fuck with that. I man. thought you took it. Man, no. Oh, oh you know what? Oh, my God. That's my other buddy. No, yeah. That, I, I'm a little paranoid about super high estrogen. Good. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that we're on, right on line with that. Because in this world, we get a little desensitized to certain things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I look at people's stack or when I used to hang out with particular people that competed in IFBB, I was like, wow, you guys are taking that much shit? Like that's fucking gnarly, dude. I know, but it's crazy. But there are some, there's some other pro who's doing a fraction of that, you know? Yeah, a fraction of that. But I feel like everybody, if you're in IFBB, has gone hard for at some a while. Yeah. And yeah, you've had to build that layering and then you can just hold it at a light amount. Yeah, I think every competitive bodybuilder at one point has taken more than probably they sh needed to, to yes get the, get the, they could have got results with a little bit less We've yes been, and again i've never gone nuts but looking back i can definitely see like times where i probably could have cut it you know 20 percent and not changed anything hey, let's talk about this one because i don't dabble with this and somebody had asked me the question today now uh, a client had asked me the question today just picked my brain i go i honestly have never even looked into it because i'll never do it myself insulin I know you oh, like insulin. That, right? So yeah, can, I haven't, can we haven't talk about that a little bit? Because I just want to listen about like. I mean, what? honestly, the only reason I'm not taking it this prep is because Hani Rambot is so against insulin. Really? And, I mean, he's just such an amazing coach, right? He's like the top of the top. You know, I I worked, like I, I kind of worked with Milos. I gave him all my money, and we like did a qu quick brief introduction, but then he ended up not being able to coach me just because. I was doing such crazy shit as far as my diet at the time. I was doing real long fast. He's just not used real to it. Carbs. And he's like, dude, I fucking, this is, this is so different. And I looked really good. I was getting ready for a show. And he's like, he's you're good. Up, he's like, I don't want to fuck you up. But um, no, I have, I have done insulin. And I mean, I think, so I, I grew 20 pounds of stage weight in a year using GH and insulin. So if know? people don't know what insulin does, it's just going to, long story short, get you bigger, right? Yeah. You I mean, when you time safe it, with it, when you time it with the HGH, it, it increases the IGF one. And then obviously you're going to partition and utilize carbs a lot better too. Can you give us a, a, a day of it? Cause I'm curious of how this is uh, used. I, I haven't used it this prep. I'm probably going to start cause I just can't seem to but, fill but out. But when you did use it, like how, how do you, like you wake up in the morning, like how does this go? So I've always just been a pre and post workout unless I was doing like, a carb up day and I try to take a little bit with each meal. So pre-workout, I might take four IUs. It's so low. I mean, two to four IUs and then of insulin of insulin. Okay. Yeah. And then I was taking 50 to sub 75 grams of carbs. Um, sub well, it doesn't matter really. I mean, were you yeah, preference? I was, I was usually doing sub Q. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I would take, um, like 50 to 75 grams of carbs and then, uh, and then also during that time you take your injection, injectable L carnitine, everything that you just want shuttled through your body, mm. through your creatine, all, all that good stuff. EAAs, and then after workout, I would do like another four, and then I would have a high carb post workout. Is that day. aggressive uh, for no, insulin standards? I mean, no, I mean, so like like Milo's protocol is usually ten and ten. Ten and, and 10. I was doing like four and four, two to four. And then you do your HGH one. Um, usually I would, you know, there, there's different philosophies on when to do that and timing with your, I like first your, thing in the morning. I well, think if it's, you just stay consistent with well, it. I don't like to do too much at once. And so, oh, usually, well, how much HGH, HGH, excuse me, are you doing? I mean, it, well, when I was taking all the, um, legit stuff, I was doing two, but now I'm doing some underground. So I'm, I'm it's like four to six. So if okay. I'm doing, Four's not that much. If I'm doing six, I'll, I'll do like two, two and two. And I don't even know if this fucking thing's working. I'm not getting any. Any sides and shit. So. You're not getting the small, nice small. Yeah, we'll hands. see. I'm gonna go get some blood work, and if it's not working, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. That's hilarious. They gave me this because they were out of the pharmaceutical shit. <laughs> but what are you expecting to see on the IGF? I don't know. I mean, if I'm taking six, it should be fucking double at least. You yeah. know, at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. Good indication for me is well, first off, is the pumps, but I can't really tell when I have too much shit in my system. Yeah. You know, you yeah, have a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I've gotten that anytime I've had on a high shit. carb day, and yeah. then I wake up and I'm like, fuck, my I hands are like, that at all. Yeah. Uh, so got we'll it. And I'm always kind of like foolish I'm, I can't tell that much it doesn't make me much fooler in general so and insulin's a maybe for this the stack yeah I I, I I like insulin I'm gonna start taking it this prep for sure because I just can't fill out I mean I think it's I think some people probably shouldn't do it you know depending on your body type and you know where you're at as far as like leanness you know I yeah think if you're not very lean I don't think I would do it I don't some people do it in the off season I probably wouldn't do it in the off season you what know? are your thoughts when people uh, I got a lot of people got me on oh my coach puts me either they're, they're overweight it's fine. They go, my coach has got me on this, this, and this, and it's okay. So it's test at six, it's Winstraw at 50, it's Mast at 200. I'm like, why, why are these DHTs in your stack? Yeah. I mean, you don't, you, these are, these are cosmetic, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like, why we're not, we're not taking this to cut fat. But what I wanted to talk about is we're going to get back to Halo one more time. You are saying you're going to use that a week to two weeks out of your show. Well, so I, I'm going to be on Anavar. I'll probably take Anavar starting six weeks out, and then the last two weeks I'll probably switch to Halo. Probably ten. Every and you're gonna day. get. You're gonna cut a lot of fat right there. I'll if there's any fat to cut, because you're already fucking lean. But like the harder well, I get, the more dense I get. It's just the way I figuratively explain it is it just pushes the fat out. Yeah, I mean you really can feel your skin like tight it's around epic. the muscles. Yeah. T-ball at 100. Have you fucked with that at 100? No, I think I've only done T-ball once. It was 50s. And yeah. did you be more crazy about it? Or you? I love it. 
I mean, I've just really just stuck to Anavar for the most part. You and, love your VAR. And Adrol, you know? Damn. I mean, those are the two that I've bounced with mostly. I want to try. Have you done Super Draw? I have done Super Draw once, and I, I didn't get the craziness that everyone says you get. I get good results with my clients and stuff like that. But I, and I also have noticed if you run Winst Draw straight for like six weeks with the Super Draw kind of the way how I'm doing Halo, the liver is harsher on the Winst Draw. Yeah. I've noticed that. Personally. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I wanted to get on Accutane when I was 24, I did done Winstrol for my first cycle and then it was like five weeks on and then I had the uh, AST, ALT. One of it was in the eighties. The other one was in like the high seventies and I couldn't do Accutane for like two, three months. Yeah. So I was like, Oh shit. Like I need to, like, this is, that's when I started taking it seriously in terms of like, what is liver toxic? And I do love Winstrol. What are your thoughts on Winstrol? Winstrol's but fine. It's like, liver I'm, toxic. Just, I'm just pretty dry, you know, in general. Yeah. So, I mean, I've taken Winstrol. I, I, one of my preps, I was alternating Winstraw and Adrol. It's know? like an inch. It's like an instant pill that like sucks out the water, though. Essentially. Yeah, and again, yeah. I mean, people like that two, are watery in general. You're dry, dude. It's like fuck. Like yeah. sometimes I feel like I'm fucking too dry. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't really take. Fuck you. <laughs> Not always, yeah. but you know, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember coming to your house when I was younger, and I would just like I was still figuring it out, and it wasn't clicking for me. And then you're like, oh well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, that sucks. And I'm like, fucking hey, dude, that's crazy. And then what are your thoughts on uh, Viagra, Cialis for uh, for pumps? I mean, I have some. I take it when I remember. You know, five migs. What do you prefer? Three. Cialis, yeah, right. Yeah, isn't, it's in your isn't system. That the thing? I mean, yeah. people take Viagra for for pumps. I just don't. I don't even fuck with Viagra for anything. I just feel like if it's in my system, I don't. Have to well, worry Viagra about is like the one if you really, really need your dick to come through. And it's, it's like the like, twist at the end of the. Point, it's like right? I mean that's a little more powerful than Cialis. You yeah, know? like Viagra. If your if your dick is just not working, that for sure will get. It. I mean, Cialis should do the job, but Viagra. It should definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I like Cialis for the uh, for the pump and then. Potential blood pressure control. I was just about to say, lowest blood pressure, yeah, which is nice. I'm taking 80 migs of uh, Temostartan, so... What is that? It's like the most kind of um, moderate like blood blood pressure medication. Mm -hmm. Rich Piana, guys. So, uh, first off, some pe you're either going to love or hate that guy in RIP because I, I, he is a fucking dope-ass dude and a YouTube um, pioneer, one of the OGs. I love doing two-a-days. John uh, loves doing two-a-days. Rich Piana loved doing two-a-days, and that's somebody that you fucked with heavily correct um yeah i worked with rich as well you know then my time in the industry i've gotten to kind of <laughs> how did you how did you meet him well so after i so i was at gold gym fullerton with bradley i fired him and then i uh <laughs> ended up wanting to switch to that gym um just because i was looking for a change when my friends started running that gym and he was really trying to bring me over and uh i was kind of the hot shit of the company at the time i wanted to turn that gym around and kind of make a name for myself so i went up there and that was a fucking shock, first of all, because I'm, I'm from Texas. I only worked in Fullerton before that. And then I go to West Hollywood. I'm like, holy fuck, this shit is crazy out really? here. Really? I mean, just the flamboyant gay guys, which is fine. I just had never been around that. It's and a just, lot. Just all the craziness. And that, that was a gay gym. That was 100% gay. And Rich was um, <laughs> one of our trainers who was an independent trainer. So we had in-house trainers that I was in charge of. And then we had independent trainers that just did their own thing that <laughs> made our in-house trainers feel like shit because they would pull up in fucking $150,000 cars and then like our trainers be fucking biking it to work taking Vespas and shit, no <laughs> so, shit. so Rich is one of the uh, the independents there and I remember the first fucking day I saw this dude I'm just like I had never fucking seen anything like that in my life like the tattoos huge, yeah. he had he had like the weird eye contacts and stuff like and just fucking freaky as shit and I'm just like oh my god what is happening and then everyone's like yeah, he's nice like you can talk to him he's cool like so we were there all the time I worked there fucking 12 hours a day he was there 10 hours a day just training all of his, his gay clients you know and so i, I got his gay clients. Yeah, I, I got pretty tight with him i would talk to him pretty regularly he trained me one time he had to cancel and i was like hey like what, just tell me something for shoulders man like what just, any, just whatever I'm, I'm gonna i was gonna work out I was gonna, i'm doing shoulders like what's like a killer fucking set i can do and he actually took me through a, a fucking drop set starting with 60s Working my way down to like fives on shoulder flies, and then working failure. my way back up, and I was just like, "Motherfucker, I can't even wash like my I'm hair." Not that after much that. trend, Rich. Come on. <laughs> no. I remember right. I tried to wash my hair after like ten minutes after, couldn't couldn't reach it. I mean, he but, fucked with synthol. I'm assuming. A little, yeah, yeah. A little, I mean, little bit, right? Some spot treatment here and there. I mean, a lot of guys do it in IFBB. Yeah, right? I'm sure he did. I mean, yeah. that's something that I don't like agree with. I won't ever do. But I mean, if you can do it to where people don't notice, then... synthol is an oil filler essentially that makes. 
like everything more padded. Um, it blows it up a little bit, right? Yeah. People that don't know. Yeah. And so, I mean, he was a cool, cool guy. He was very real. I mean, I know a lot of people, he was controversial, but he, he kept it fucking real. And he was, a, he was a good guy. He went out his way to help people. And like, he seemed like a good, a good guy. Like he was the, the two a day pioneer. It's not, I didn't learn that from rich, but I just like when I have some precedent on what I can go by with who else did it. And so did Arnold Schwarzenegger. And if you get familiar with his content, I mean, we're going to show it. Uh, if you actually go on our YouTube videos, John's is shredded as you can be. Uh, now, like what I, what do you think is the most improved muscle group in your body? Cause now when I'm looking at your legs, I'm like, Ooh, wow, damn. Um, and your back to be honest. Cause there's a and your back biceps. was like, I mean, I put a lot biceps. of work on my biceps and yeah, my lats too. I, a lot of, I think a lot of people don't know how to really like put a lot, the appropriate stress on their lats. And I, I always had like an idea, but then like it just clicked like way better. And so I started doing a lot of like rows to focus on my lats and like my front double looks so fucking different now than it did. It was clean. Like yeah. that, that lats helped so much. So it's, it's like when you're rowing, like a lot of people, like they just get scaffolding movement. Right. But if you really like get glenohumeral depression and just focus on driving down and, and keeping the ribs down, you're going to get all that. You're going to stop at a certain point. So I started incorporating tons of lat rows from different angles, and they, they just fucking blew when up. When you do a dumbbell row, I'm actually going to get up real quick, but this is how I do it personally. And let's just, this is candid. Let's just, I go down right here. So everybody stops on their dumbbell row. They just, they go like this. This is what I'm seeing majority of the time. I dip my shoulder and break form so I get a bigger stretch, and I come up a little bit higher. And it, I get this really nice pump. You feel, where are you feeling like lats or a little bit of everything? I feel a lot more in lats, um, but I'm just going down well, more, so I'm getting go, more. You kind of go back. You I, kinda... I'll, I'll scoot it back, but I break the posture even when I'm doing um, when I when I'm doing uh, what do you fucking call them cable rows? Yeah. So like I'll put my feet planted because a lot of people put their feet like this, right? Yeah. I plant them and I'll break my posture. I'll go like this and I'll finish nice and tight. So I'm getting a lot more into my rector. Well, that's what you look at Arnold back in the day, you'll see him doing the same thing. You know, some people just over, overdo it and they get tension off the muscle, just the connective tissue. But I'm sure you, you're feeling it. You know, it's I feel it. No, it's just yeah. my I want to push it too hard. Uh, but I, I've gotten to the point where it's like I used to lift like I used to lift harder in terms of like weight and um, just like I used to trap shrug like 405 yeah. to 495. But what's the fucking point? Yeah. Now I just go grab if I want to do trap shrugs of the, the wheelbarrow. Right. And I just put like two to three plates max and I'm just cranking out volume. Uh, you can even grab the cables like right here, and I'm just cranking yeah, that's out. That's what I do all the time. That's it's perfect. Main, There's main no, moves, I don't feel like shit anymore. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like you get smarter as you get older. And sometimes I'm just seeing people do things, and I'm just like, fucking, hey, man. I think the worst thing that I can see at the gym is the, f and it's like, it's the 50 year old that has the shitty form that you, you're 50 years old and you've been too cheap to hire a trainer your whole life and you're still ego lifting. And, you're, and I just have no respect for those people because I literally know they're too cheap to hire a fucking and trainer. They're, they're in pain. They're just lifting through pain. Like, what you are know? you doing, bro? Like, I just, I, I cannot stand. That's like the, my biggest pet peeve when I'm at the gym, to be honest. That and somebody walking in front of my mirror. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I fucking hate that. That's yeah, like, especially on Halo and Trend. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, maybe if you look like shit, you could, you're allowed to walk in front of that person. But if you're like someone who's like in a stringer and you're fucking looking really good, like, it's, especially if I'm just like clearly checking work. myself. Like, out like fuck yeah man and, and sometimes so you're, you're using it for form you know you're trying to make sure you're keeping stuff from getting involved <laughs> three favorite lifts um i did it today i haven't done it in years because i got so fucking strong on it it was pointless and it started hurting my hands but i, I did dips i've been doing some weighted dips i like again. weighted dips yeah and uh, i mean those, i like those assisted dips too like with the handicap mach yeah. machine or i like to do that with pull-ups so i can really feel it yeah I mean, pull-ups are my fucking favorite right now because I'm, I'm light. You know, when I'm 220 plus, like, I don't, I don't Just really cranking them out. But, yeah, yeah, when I'm light. How much, like how much are you weighing right now? Like 201, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, I'm, I mean, my plans for the comp prep now is I haven't introduced trainer or anything is I'm going to try to just stay at 200 until close to show and then pull water. It could be like 196. Are you, you're going to throw a trainer though? Yeah. You yeah. have to. Yeah. Yeah. How many I mean, weeks I'm out? I'm trying to get my fucking pro card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many weeks out? I think I'm going to throw it. So the shows are, are two weeks out. So I think I'm going to throw it in six weeks out from the first show. So it'll be yeah. eight, eight weeks total. That's fitting. And then where are you going to run it at? Uh, I'll probably start at 150. I'll probably get up to 350. Nice. Yeah. That's great. That's something we never talked about, running it as low as 150. And I love that. I, I mean, I'll rock that until I stop seeing progress. Like You right. don't just jump it until because you want to jump it. Like right. Once you start seeing like you're – you need to progress it, then you do it. But yeah. if you're still making gains and it's still going, like I'll, I'll stay low. I, might, I feel that. I don't have to hit 350, but I feel that. that's what I think. Yeah. 350 is still relatively low. That's kind of as far as I took it in a continual. Yeah. I did 400 I, I don't for think two I weeks. I go higher than that ever again. No, know? no. And then uh, my favorite piece of equipment is the Smith machine because I, I wanted to kind of just real quick get into the chest. Everybody yeah. wants to build a huge chest. Mine, the past two cycles, has really gone to the point where I feel like that might be my best future person. Yeah. 
I love to go really high to the point where it's almost uncomfortable. My shoulders have really like, they don't, I've never hurt them really, to be honest. So I go like right here, even whether I'm like flat on a guillotine or if I'm on incline, I go really, really slow and I'll crank out a lot of reps through my palms. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, people that critique bodybuilders, like, you see people talk shit about Branch Warren and stuff, like, they don't like his form. Like, Branch Warren, that was the, that guy, the bald dude? Yeah, yeah, you know, and he's hard, right? Yeah, and he's doing ballistic movements. That motherfucker's feeling it where he's supposed to feel it. He didn't yeah. get injured working out ever, you know? Like, I something that I wouldn't do myself or have a lot of clients do, but I know you're feeling it where you're supposed to feel it, and you're able to transfer that force in a, in a good way. Right. You know, so you got to do stuff that's for you, too, you know? Right. And if I do stuff like that, you know, guillotine press, I'm going to be pretty light, and I actually do like things like that because it can actually inhibit anterior neck tightness and stuff like that right but usually i just wouldn't go like heavy heavy and then your cardio is different from mine i like doing steady state i like doing stairmaster i don't like to go too long i kind of got that from john too it's like you want to train smarter not harder with cardio right yeah. Yeah. eat a little less and do a little less time on cardio so you're not a hamster on a wheel Right. Yeah. I mean, there's the two thoughts, right? Um, I don't do that much cardio. I, Which I, just, I wanted to ask you, do you like HI, do you do like no, the fuck, HIIT? No. I, I walk 20 minutes a day when I wake up. <laughs> that's it. That's what it's I did. Ridiculous. That's what I did through my whole last two shows. Yeah. I, won, I won both of them. So it's like, I don't, I don't fucking want to do, do ass, more unless I have to. I mean, sometimes I think maybe doing more might help my appetite a little bit. And my, there's the theory, right? That if you increase your food, increase your cardio, you still get the growth signaling of your oh, body. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, I don't fucking have time, man. I don't have time. I wish I could do two days. I wish I could maybe do a little extra cardio, but I, I just don't fucking got the time. And yeah, your I don't need it. So. Clients are paying too much for you to work out with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you know no fucking mean? way. <laughs> yeah, can I get a set in? Oh, they would, well, at first they would just fucking cramp my shit, you know? Yeah. They would fuck me up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Are you seeing a lot of like, I, th I remember when I was doing private training, I was like, I did that for Naples Fitness and Long Beach. I, I, where the money was, was the retired citizens. Yeah. Because I mean, they got free time, they got they got the capital, and they're going to be coming in. That was my original, when I first became a trainer, my specialty was elderly and, and disabled, but elderly. Because exactly for and that Now, reason. not so much. Well, I mean, just where I'm at, we're a little, it's a little more serious. You've seen the gym. You know, yeah. it's like we do have elderly clients and we do a lot of rehab, but it's people that are like fucking driven that go in there. So, I mean, here our clientele are CEOs, you know, um, housewives, people that are, I mean, most of my guys are 40 to 60 in pretty fucking good shape. Nice. You know, they're pretty driven. Nice. Know. Anybody that wants the sauce or no? Um, not my clients. There are some clients they in the gym like that are mine. Like, Come on, bro. Like, I do have a girl who I'm getting ready for a show, and she's asking me. She's like, "Should I take drugs? Should I take Anavar?" I'm like, "No, you're not trying to do this for like anything." What, what do you think females should do for a, like a standard bikini if they want to win a bikini yeah, show? Yeah, if they're serious, they want to do it. I mean, Anavar is the fucking standard. Clen. Yeah, I mean, girls girls usually tend to take Clen. I, I the thing that's just tricky with the girls is, is the T3 and stuff like that because they are just so sensitive. I mean, mm. you can blast 75 and you'll bounce back in like a month. You, you won't even be able to tell anything at mm. all. Like a woman, it could take them like six months to like have anything come close to back mm. to where they were. So, what about Primo? I mean, yeah. I mean, I think that's good. A lot of girls don't want to inject, and the, the acetate tabs are a little harder to, to get, but that's really good. I've had my ex run run that, and that was, that was really good. Do you do a lot of contest prep with clients? Not not anymore. Not right now. You know, there's just there's not money in there. That's funny. Yeah, I really just don't want that response. Like, yeah. I just don't want to do what I'm on. And I also don't want to be responsible for recommending that many it's drugs. too much. You know? If like the I, dose is too high. You got to keep doing this all the time. Like, I personally won't do that for myself, so I don't want to do that to other people. Yeah, exactly. And I know, like, it's so individual. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, it is. It's, it's like what works for me. Like, I, I can't prescribe that to somebody what else. What works and, for you is, like, that doesn't work for anybody. <laughs> no, that's not true. I don't know, man. That's, that, that's like, It's like a crazy metabolism. Metabolism, doesn't do cardio does you, it, don't get me wrong you work your ass off you yeah, I mean do I it and do, you, you put your capacity your, your time into different outlets for me I need to do my cardio for me I have to starve myself a little bit more you know what I mean for you it's like the muscle building is tougher so you really yeah, exactly. go in, yeah you really go into that force like for me at a deficit I can grow yeah like I, I for me gaining like I, I just try so hard to hit 220 and it like just kill me, and then as soon as I start dying, it's like I'm two eighteen out of like deficit right, right now. It's fucking like this is. I never gone into a cycle. I was two fifteen, two twelve when I went into the cycle. I was never this big ever going into a cycle. Yeah. What are your thoughts on doing PCT versus blasting and cruising? Let's end it with that one. Well, I mean, that's what I said. I did that up until I was 30 years old. And I mean, I don't know if that's part of why I'm fertile still, but mm. I think that's what you should do unless, you know, I I wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. You know what I mean? They, so, ha you, they have to blast and cruise. And so I, I was like, at that point, I'm going to get on TRT. You know? Right. Um, I wanted to, I figured my levels of probably at that point were lower. You know, they, they weren't that bad, but they were, they were, they were a little lower. They were like, in the, the, you think the longer break you do, especially if you do PCT, you're not living on the needle, you get a better response. Yeah. 
Because yeah. I felt that last time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's right. This old Kevin Lavroni approach, right? Just fucking... Oh, you would PCT? Just fucking don't do anything for like six months. Like, Oh, that's basically mine. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. he would just transform like a fucking freak. Right? Yeah, yeah, he's, he was a fucking gem. Who's your favorite bodybuilder? Um, of all time, probably Lavroni, yeah. I mean, I think... Why? He, just just his physique-wise, you know? Yeah, not necessarily as like any, anything else. Just his total physique was just fucking sick. I think he's the best non-Mr. Olympia, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin Lavroni was... Uh, a, I should say is a legend, right? Yeah. I mean, that guy is still fucking... He's still jacked. Yeah, I mean, he came back in 16, right? Wasn't that when he I, you back? know more than I yeah, do when he, it comes. He came back to, like a fifty-one on the Olympia stage. Yeah, when you walk like into Iron freak. Body, it's just like all fucking everybody's stepping on stage from different years. <laughs> it's pretty fucking epic, guys. I feel like we covered a lot uh, in a short amount of time, as we usually do. We crank it out. I truly believe this is the only podcast really getting into the raw and real things. I'm hoping that you guys are loving this as much as I am. I feel it, especially when going TikTok Live or when I read the comments. Everybody's got good shit to say. Brother, thank you so much for coming. Of course. Thank you for having me, man. I love it. We'll have you back on. Uh, John and I will definitely get maybe let's do arms next time at Iron Body. Yeah. And we'll crank it out. All right. Till next time, guys. All right. Peace. Thanks. Thanks.